When people are released from jail, they have the responsibility to appear in court. But some of these people choose to go on the run. They go back home to mommy. And that is when these guys come into the picture. So sit back and listen to the Off the Hook Podcast with Chad and Rob. Very fine people on both sides. These are real stories, but the names have been changed. What's going on, guys? I'm Rob. And I'm Chad, and we have a special guest. Absolutely. So before I before I tell you who this fine young man is here beside me, um, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's has been a minute since we did a podcast uh, till now, but so we're trying to get back in a groove of things here. Um, so I got something special for uh, our guy here. Hang on, ready? All right. So let me introduce you to Mr. Hunter Ford here. He is. Yes, he has been a buddy of mine for a long time, and. This man is a local entrepreneur. He owns a he's owned a few businesses here in town. He actually has a really good one. Stay humble. Oh, that's a good song. Stay yeah. Don't Local boys, man, good. Man break you down. Uh, gotta give it up to Sean, man. He, Live righteous. Sean and them know Live what they're Sean and them know what they're doing, man. They've done a really good job, man. I'm proud of them. So, uh, Mr. Hunter Ford here, he owns uh, Momentum Distillery. Momentum Distillery now, yep. Uh, it's a carry-on from our Momentum Surf and Skate that we spent 17 years on the corner of Market and Front. That's where I met you up many moons ago with my, my, my 15-year-old now, almost I've watched, 60. I've watched him grow up from, yeah. the, from little man to big man. Yeah, I remember we buy a skateboard from me, and he skateboarded out here at the Federal Courthouse, and it says no skateboarding on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, the Momentum I, board. I remember you running around with him picking up chicks, you know? So he was a chick <laughs> magnet, too, wasn't he? That, God, that was a long time. Oh my god! <laughs> I know. Back in the old Ziggy's days. Yeah, man. Uh, he used to go to shows with us too. Uh huh. Yeah. So, well seasoned. Well seasoned. So Hunter, uh, he's been a good buddy of mine for a long time, and he's been involved uh, with politics here locally. Um, he's been on. He's done some uh, the radio show uh, here locally. He's also um, been a big, big supporter of us and what we do as Bell Bondsman. Uh, he's also been active with city council uh you got to keep those guys in check yeah you do man because they get comfy and and want to abuse it well it's the most important thing that you can do as a citizen is to show up to your school board meetings because you vote for those people to show up for your city council even if you don't vote for them and you live in the county and to vote on your your county officials um i identify as a republican and i ran for you nc identify. house district yeah. <laughs> I identify, that's right um I ran for NC House District 19 before the districts were changed back in 2018. And it's really important that you get involved in local politics because that's where your decisions are made and, and that's what affects your daily life. Uh, what, what they're going to spend your taxpayer dollars uh, locally on is a, a big deal more so than, than the national politics. They're going to affect you a little bit harder. Yeah, because here in North Carolina, all the money... That uh, we've said this before, all the money from bell bondsmen that's paid through the forfeitures goes to the school system. So, you, you know, you want to be involved because, I mean, that's, that's... Yeah, we're talking, we're talking um, on the average, 11 to $14 million a year across the state of North Carolina and, and bail forfeiture revenue. And that's gone down since the whole bail reform. Correct. And, yeah, and, it's gone down. You know, they, they say crime's gone down, but it's not true when you're letting people out for crimes that's been committed and just it never gets recorded so that's that's important to note when you when you look at these statistics well and and you got to think about too that uh the crime might be down for first-time offenders but crime is way up for recidivism the people that are committing crimes without any kind of uh, accountability they're going to continue to commit crimes. They're career criminals at that point. In the in New Hanover County, I believe you and I were talking about this. Wasn't it around sixty two percent recidivism? Sixty two, sixty four percent, and then nationwide, there. they were saying like eighty percent of people that have spent days in jail, their their risk of recidivism is is a pretty much foregone conclusion. 
Wow. Mm. It was that hot. Well, um, so that's it's it's that's a good you know that's a big topic you know it's it's a it's something that's not going away. So tonight, whether we see it tonight on the debate or not, who yeah. So when knows? we're while we're filming this, <clears throat> this is the day of the big Harris Trump. Yeah, we're gonna save we're gonna save uh, <laughs> uh, the episode we did uh, a couple weeks for for next week. So yeah, well, well, I, I would love for Trump right off the get go to 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 ask her, "Are you here?" I just want to make sure you were here because the last person I debated wasn't here. So just from the get-go, are you here? Are you with us? <laughs> that would be Excuse it. me, I'm talking. Hold on, I'm, I'm talking. It's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll go ahead and make that prediction. Well, and they've said, like, how do you prepare to debate somebody like Kamala Harris that has had no real responsibilities? She didn't introduce any bills when she was in the Senate. She was the most liberal voting politician in the entire United States Senate, her her record as a prosecutor getting put in that role by George Soros backed funds and being a liberal prosecutor, how do you set up to debate against somebody that has no core value? She will flip flop and go whichever way the wind blows. Well, here's here's my biggest concern. You know, Bidenomics is. It's killing us all. It's killing oh, yeah. everybody. I don't give a damn what side of the aisle you're on, but it's killing us. Everybody's pocket. So there, she's going to get up there and say how she's going to do this and do that. Well, you're in office right now. Why aren't you doing something right now to swing that vote? Exactly. And uh, I don't think she has an answer for that. I mean, Trump over the last two weeks has been completely available. Off the script questions, he's answered them all with impunity. You know, you can tell that he believes in what he's saying. And you can listen to her scripted answers. So she's had a chance to actually perform something that's pre-rehearsed, and she still messes it up. Well, it's... um I saw something a TikTok the other day, and I and I laughed my ass off. It was a C, it was an interview from a CNN or, or it's one of them networks that you know, I don't watch. So they're asking her about something, and they're like, "Well, a couple of years ago, you said the complete opposite. So what is it?" And it, she was like, uh, uh, "I mean, you could tell in her face she just didn't know what was going on. Didn't realize that there's actually video footage of that, right? Yeah, yes. There's a lot of the aha moments for her. Look, I don't uh, mind. I don't mind a woman president, no, but not this one. Not this one. Yeah. Well, even Trump said he'd take Hillary Clinton over. Kamala Harris, you know, and, and at, least she, at least Hillary Clinton knows what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Kamala, she's been she's been behind Biden this whole time, and he don't know what he hell he don't know what damn day it is. Well, I'm trying to figure out what she has done because she says now that she wasn't the border czar, and we know that she didn't act as the border czar because of those hot mic moments where they asked her. Have you been to the border? And she said, well, I haven't been to Europe either. So, you know, like, what has she done over the last three and a half Woman, years? Woman, can you answer a straight question? <laughs> yeah. You know, she veers off every time. I'm, 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 I'm also curious, uh, how are they going to... Uh, there was no, there's no audience in, in the debate no, tonight? No, I don't think so. There's no, no. audience. Um, they, they have to leave the mics on, don't they? No, no, no. They, they're going to cut the mics. Oh, they're, they're we, off? Mm-hmm. Oh. She wanted them to be on so she could do that, don't talk over me, I'm a woman. And uh, they're like, nah, we're going to do it the same way we did it with Joe Biden. That's Those right. were fair rules. Right. And when you look at the backdrop, there's no audience there. But there's about a hundred different media folks that are spread out mm-hmm. in the balconies and uh, in the the booths and stuff right there in front of uh, where they set up as the debate stage. And debates are tough, and you really want an audience to kind of give you that boost and that confidence when you're when you're just doing it cold with no audience. You don't get to feel that give and take of uh, I shouldn't say that again because it wasn't received well. Um, you're kind of left up to, to watching it post-debate and uh, criticizing your own performance, which most people do anyways. But it's going to be interesting. I, I'm looking forward to it because I'm sure she's going to hot mic salad something. And we'll be talking about it for the next couple of weeks. You'll be hearing this. Hot mic salad. Somebody that cackles all the time and laughs. And- <laughs> 
<laughs> Everything's funny to Kamala, right? It's all funny. Just laugh. I hate that laugh. Like you're, you're 401k. Four years of that laugh, people. Can you take it? Your 401k is down the toilet. <laughs> can you take it? Your 401k is down the toilet. Can you take it? <laughs> your un- unrealized taxes. <laughs> China is invading us right now. <laughs> I think that's the biggest policy uh, presentation that she's made that, that people really need to take a hard look at. If you own something, if you own anything and it increases in value, then she wants you to pay unrealized capital gains on it. So your house goes up in value. Let's say your mother's elderly and she's in poor health. Your father's already passed away. You're doing everything you can. Uh, Maybe she's pulled money out of the house in a reverse mortgage. You're doing everything you can to take care of your mom and make sure that this is like a comfortable passing no matter how long it takes. And all of a sudden the government says, we want this unrecognized capital gains. We don't care what you've got going on in your personal life. Well, where do you come up with that money? You ultimately have to sell the house and you got to come up with something else to pay this tax because you don't want it to be in arrears because, man, their their interest rate on collections is ridiculous. This is another issue that I have. Your dollars taxed. How many times do you know the actual number uh, percentage? How many times that dollar is taxed? Several hundred percent, it's got to be, right? I mean, you think about just individual things that you buy, an automobile. You buy it, you pay sales tax. Uh, If you buy too big of one, then you pay a luxury tax. Uh, You have tax title and tags. You know, that's part of uh, the the sale of a a vehicle. That's just one vehicle out of thousands that's being sold a day. Well, you got to drive it. You might have to go through tolls. You got to pay insurance. Uh, and then now, under Kamala Harris, she wants you to pay unrecognized capital gains. So you got a car that, let's say, what, 20 years makes it a classic? You got a 20-year-old piece of junk. Maybe they decide, oh, well, you know, we're going to assess the value of this because now it's a classic car. I mean, those are the kind of ridiculous things that the liberal left want to implement because they need money for their radical agenda. Um. I'm so done with it. I'm so tired. Like I like literally I have looked into like finding somewhere else to go. Like I honestly have been and I don't I've, want I've, to. I've looked at non extraditing countries, but that's for a whole different reason. <laughs> <laughs> Not while you're on bond, sir. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'll come with me and Chad will be busting down your fucking front door. Well, and that's what's fun about knowing about local politics. Like, I sent you guys on a hit job when uh, District Attorney (laughs) Ben David was meeting with some liberal uh, (laughs) people that were talking about... That's that that, that meeting we went to. uh Uh-huh, that were talking about bail reform. Meeting, meeting. Let's clarify. (laughs) Let's clarify what he's talking about. Meeting, not a hit job. I swear to God, it wasn't. (laughs) Um, But uh, it was a meeting with uh, far-left liberals that wanted to implement this bail reform here in Wilmington. And uh, luckily... He came to his senses while you guys were there and pretty much said, well, you know, I see that this really didn't work in uh, Durham and I think Charlotte, uh, Mecklenburg area. Oh, they're way out there. They're, they've lost their freaking minds there. Uh, and, the crime rate is through the roof in Charlotte. It's a little, oh, yeah. little Chicago in Charlotte. Yeah. Well, and, and as a business owner, that terrifies me because you look and see what's on the national news, these orchestrated smash and grabs in, in stores that have value. So a Louis Vuitton, a cell phone store. Man, I own a liquor store. Liquor stores are known for being robbed. Right. So that terrifies me, this, this lawlessness. Uh, you know, people that come from an area like Charlotte and New Hanover County, I think that they do a relatively good job of you know, basically bringing charges and prosecuting people that commit crimes. I well, think we if, are. If Jason gets in, I I know that I know there will be. Yeah, we know where he stands on the. On the oh, and, and that was yeah. a great interview that you guys had with him last week because uh, that's something that people need to to hear. I mean, these local elections are really really important. These are the things that are going to affect you day to day, and there's a strategy for voting in uh, local elections. And it moves up too. Uh huh. You, know, you start locally, and then it moves up, and and you'll see it because eventually you don't you don't know the Jason Smith might one day he might go up and be attorney general for the state of North Carolina, and then from there he might move. I mean, 
You'd never know. Hey, we we know somebody that's running for governor right now. Yes, Mr. Robinson. If you're listening, sir, we love you. We mean it, and I cannot wait to see you. Love to have you on the podcast, Mark. The yep. first, the first black governor for the state of North Carolina. That's going to be awesome. It's a really big deal. I was really close with Douglas Wilder. Uh, I graduated from the Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs at VCU in Richmond. When he became governor, he was the first black governor ever in the United States in the capital of the Confederacy. And it was a really big deal. It was a huge moment. That was back when Democrats, you couldn't tell if they were a Democrat or Republican. You know, he had a lot of social issues growing up black, having parents. Uh, he wrote a really great book called Virginia Son. His grandparents were slaves. Uh, and you, you think about how many generations that is away. That's something that you can touch. That's something that you can feel. That's somebody that's close to you. And he implemented some huge changes that Democrats wouldn't do today. Uh, his biggest contribution to Virginia and just law enforcement in, you know, in general was um, Project Exile. Uh, when he became governor, he grew up in Richmond. He said, look, the governor's mansion's here in Richmond. We're not going to have the gun crime that we have. Project Exile was created after they found Jerry Oliver, and they did what Wilmington didn't do when Wilmington looked for a new police chief. I think Donnie Williams, our chief of uh, police in Wilmington, is highly unqualified. He was only hired as a DEI because he was the most senior black police officer in the Wilmington Police Department. And it was just easy for them to go ahead and give him the job. What Richmond did during this time when Doug Wilder was the governor, they scoured the earth and they found this young black uh, progressive um, chief out in Pasadena, California, that was dealing with the problems that Richmond had, which were illegal guns, gangs, and violent crime. That's what we had going on during that time. Uh, he was hired during the George Floyd protests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's just not done the job that we needed to have done. And I, I, I can compare it to what happened when Doug Wilder was the governor. Project Exile, if you got caught in the commission of a felony, any felony, and you had an illegal firearm, you automatically got five years in federal prison. Mm. Guess what happened to crime? Went way down. Right. Yeah. And right. nobody wants to commit it no more. But then you got, uh, but then you also got another issue when you have like illegal immigration coming in and they they're coming from a country that's that yeah. it's that they don't want to be in no more because it's because of the crime and because of all the the the, the cartels and and they're just poor so they're coming to make a, a a better life they're trying to but they're not doing it the right way by coming through the border the right way so what but when they're coming through, they're also bringing the cartel with them because it's easier to get in. When they get here to the U.S., they they're not they don't care about committing crime. They're going they're going to do it anyway. So I don't understand why both sides don't understand this and the safety of us and our children or our children's children because this is going to affect us for many many years down the road. Well, and, and I think a lot of it is that they want something to blame, and they need a, a catalyst to blame it. So power-hungry Democrats on the left side, they'll do anything to stay in power. They think that that gives them a larger voting block. They think that it gives them a fight against Republicans, that they can have this this presence of they're the arbiters of, of what's good and what's not good and they're the ones that you have to go to for help, so they should stay in power um, despite all these these differences. And, you know, this we talked about the debate. This is one of the things that I think Donald Trump really missed out on in the last debate. He was too busy protecting his manhood in a series of about two or three questions that he missed a crucial moment that he could have really shined when they asked him, are you going to deport everybody that came in illegally? And he was still word salading, you know, just different things that uh, he was tr still trying to make a point from two questions back. What he should have said was, I'm going to start with the illegal uh, immigrants that came from Venezuela that are uh, committing crimes in our streets right now. That's going to be my number one target. The Venezuela street gangs, y'all are out first. Then I'm going to meet with my cabinet. I'm going to meet with Border Patrol. And we're going to go down the list of the worst offenders. Mm. And then when we get to a certain point, 
then we can have a conversation about getting in the line, getting in the back of the line on a path to citizenship. And that would have been one of those questions that he could have really done well with. And it was a missed opportunity. Yeah. When well, if they if they ask Kamala, I'm sure they're going to ask her laughing hyena that tonight. And when you do, oh, this is all you're going to hear. Because yeah. she don't know what she's she she honestly does not know. I, I don't think she's. I think it's going to be horrible. I mean, it's either going to go two ways. She's either going to do just enough. What I can guarantee is they will praise her if she doesn't do too bad. They're going to say that it was the greatest performance ever and that she should be president. I mean, look what we've looked at no, over the last No, they've already month. started making um, excuses excuses on why she's not going to do well. They've already started that days ago. So they're prepared for her not to do well. So, well, I think they're prepared for her not to do it at all. I'll be surprised if we uh, get to 9 o'clock <laughs> tonight and there is no debate. That would be horrible. Um, yeah. I, for her. Well, and that's I the mean, thing is she would bring it on... President Trump's team and all the news outlets would go with it and people would believe it. Whether or not it was true or not, that's the thing is there's a lot of people on the left that cannot have a conversation with anybody that's conservative. They're fr- that, I, I think they deep down inside, a lot of people know that Trump's right, but they're not going to admit it because they're afraid of change. They're afraid. Uh, they're afraid of saying, you know, if what? it came out of someone else's mouth, the same thing, they might accept it, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. If, the, it, just if their it, hate for the man is so great, yeah. Look, I, look, I, I personally, you think I'm gonna hang out with Donald Trump and like, you know, go play golf? I would like to, <laughs> but <laughs> no. I mean, the man, but like, the man, the man is he's he's a New Yorker. He's he's just wired that way. The man's a multi billionaire. I mean. You know, people may not like him for that. Even movie stars don't like him for that reason, other than their, you know, whatever re- other reasons. But he he's, he didn't get that way from being stupid. Now, some people go, well, he inherited. No, the man's done. He's lost it. He's gained it. I mean, the man's not stupid. I just am not in favor of having another attorney run our country. I, I mean, I'm sick of attorneys running our country. No offense to our friends that are attorneys here. But when you're running the country, I don't think it's a great idea. The ones that have been attorneys that have done it, I haven't been a fan of, no matter what. Well, side look at were. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was uh, he he was an actor, but when he was in office, I mean, he didn't he wasn't a hundred percent the best, in the, but he was a good president. I mean, everybody's got their faults. Well, back then, like you said, left and right weren't that far from center. You could you could agree to disagree with a a, a, a um, Democrat. I won't call him liberal. A, a Democrat, because you guys at the end of the day said, "Well, it's not exactly how I see it, but I see your point." But you know, my, you know, if you back in the eighties and even nineties, if you ask if you ask somebody like if you ask my granddaddy who you vote for, he punch you in the face. Yeah, and none of your damn business. Yeah, and but now I mean. Hell, we know who you're voting for if you're driving a Subaru. Oh, yeah. If you have Amer- <laughs> if you have American flag, we know who you're voting for. Yeah. If you're wearing a mask, we know who you're voting for. We got it. <laughs> there, was a guy sitting, there was a guy sitting out in front of our office yesterday. He had Panic 2020 on his shirt and driving a Subaru. Driving a Subaru. <laughs> and Chad had I a, said stereotypes <laughs> exist for a reason. <laughs> Chad had a Ronald Reagan shirt on. I was like, hey, Chad. He's like, ooh, ooh, hang on. He walked outside. Well, and, and getting back to Trump, I think Trump is a lot more connected to us peons in the workforce, because if you look at the business that he's been in, he employs a lot of servers, bellhops, housekeepers, um, people that you would consider on the lower spectrum of, uh, you know, not a lawyer, not a doctor. But they're getting paid. They get paid really well, but he works with those people. He works with a lot of guys that were in construction that started swinging a hammer when they were young, and they worked their way up to a position where they meet with the boss. And I can tell you from working with guys that are really wealthy in the construction business, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are rednecks. Man, they're people that I grew up. They're they're my people. Yep. You know, um, they might have classed themselves up over the years, 
But they started out swinging a hammer, and that's why I think that Trump is way more connected to the average voter than somebody like Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean, hell, I was in construction uh, for a while, and uh, I realized that wasn't, I, I couldn't do that the rest of my it's life. It's hard work, yeah. Yeah, it's hard work, but, um, but yeah, I, I worked for the fire department here locally for, for uh, five, six years, and uh, learned a lot from them, and and you, you learn... As a as a fireman here, you learn who supports you, who supports you, and who doesn't. You, you learn a little bit about politics. Yeah, too, you don't learn you? a little bit about, about <laughs> politics, and you're just like, oh god, this is. All. And that's that's number uh, that's probably the number one reason why I got out is because of the politics. It was, but uh, Chief Hall has done a good job here in the county. Um, I'm very impressed to how things have gone over the years. I think I don't know if he's going to be retired anytime soon, but it's going to be. Um, It'll be soon, though, I think. From what I was told, he was going to be um, building a couple more fire stations, and then... And then that's it. And that, yeah, that's it. Um, well, I mean, that's really important. You look at, uh, again, we talked about it earlier, local elections. Take somebody that you really like and support them. Uh, and, and with elections coming up, this is really important. If you have one candidate that you want to win, and they're in a race with three choices... Um, don't have to vote for all three because you're giving two votes away from the candidate that you want to see win. I told a lot of people this uh, when Republicans got swept in the last city elections uh, last year. It was a big deal. You know, we needed to gain a seat on city council. Um, Neil Anderson was the closest vote getter. The other two Republicans were way far behind. So Democrats swept the three votes with David Joyner getting the highest vote count and Kevin Spears getting the lowest. If Republicans had really put an effort behind just getting Neil Anderson reelected, then we would have kept a Republican on city council. Now city council, just like the rest of our city and county government, is majority of liberal Democrats. I mean, you look at our, our chief of police, liberal. Our sheriff, liberal. Our uh, city manager, liberal. Our county manager, liberal. The majority of our city council and mayor, liberal. The majority of our county commissioners, liberal, we're run by liberals in this city. And if you want to make a difference, then you need to promote a candidate or you need to run yourself and get people to support you. Uh, they need some dollars. Put a little bit of money in their campaign. Even if it's just 20 bucks, that helps them buy another ad. It helps them buy a little bit more airtime. Uh, local politics, I can't stress it enough, is really important, and that also affects you guys' business. Absolutely, and you know what? Are you going to run again? I will. Um, I haven't decided when. Uh, I didn't end my campaign properly, so they want me to pay basically a $500 penalty for every quarter since the first quarter of 2018, so over $10,000. And, you know, that's another thing that's wrong with the Board of Election. I ended my campaign, but I sent two pieces of paper at the same time. So they just ignored both pieces of paper because I didn't follow protocol. Even though I ended the bank account, doesn't matter. They want me to file for each of those quarters as if I was still a candidate and then pay that penalty. Mm. Wow. Well, uh, if you run again, what do you think you'd be running for? Uh, I would run for NC House again. I, I don't the way our system is in North Carolina with city managers and county managers for all of our counties and cities throughout the state, there is a built-in government that doesn't change. So you've got your, your, your city manager and, and your county manager that does not go away. So the city council and the county commission has some power, but they really don't. They're basically just cheerleaders. Uh, they're they're needed. I mean, it's uh, you know keep stressing the importance of voting local. But I think the best that I can do is to start off creating laws for North Carolina in the North Carolina General Assembly. Yeah, I think um, I've reached out to Dane Scalise. Um, we're going to try to have him on. I know he's he's, he's, doing, he's had an upcoming event. I just got a notice notification about yep. that we could uh, pop in on. I found out. I also found out a little bit more about what Ben David's doing. Oh yeah, uh, he's I, doing. Uh, it's a the, the, like domestic. He's getting that nonprofit money. Yeah, five million dollars is what he got. Oh yeah, wow. oh yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if last minute Governor Cooper, especially if Mark wins the election, doesn't try to appoint him to a 
to a judgeship somewhere. Um, depending on who wins in NC Court of Appeals, uh, Cooper will have to nominate somebody to that position. And, you know, you can already tell with Cooper nominating the Democrat candidate against Jason. Yeah, I think that's kind of I think that's kind of messed up. I think you know if you're gonna nominate somebody, nominate somebody who's not running, in either in either party, yeah. in the coming up election. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it really shows partisanship, and I hope the people out there watching <clears throat> North Carolina is unique, but not so unique. We vote typically to separate the powers. I mean, you look at many of the last elections with Cooper winning, with Josh Stein winning, um, and then the General Assembly winning and us gaining seats in the Supreme Court of North Carolina and the North Carolina Court of Appeals gaining seats in the, the House and Senate on the federal side, and then growing um, our footprint you know, in the, the, our local General Assembly. But for some reason, Republican voters didn't vote for Dan Forrest in the last go, and they didn't well, vote I for a change you, in the we, attorney general. But you know what? I uh, think the reason why is because of COVID, and uh, Cooper had a lot of TV time. I, I can tell you Cooper is going to run for president in 2028. I can tell you unequivocally that he will run, and that's one of the reasons why he took his name out of the vice president. I know he was in the running because... Hillary, oh, let's see, what was the, uh, the both Bidens came here um, recently. So they, it was already in the works to, to get Joe out. He didn't want to lose before he had an opportunity to run. Right now, even though he did nothing because the General Assembly pretty much neutered him for the whole end of his term uh, with the veto power, with having the majority in the, mm -hmm. both the House and the Senate, he didn't want to look bad. His popularity is, is high. For, uh, for a lame duck Democrat governor. Um, so he didn't mess anything up bad. He, I didn't like the job he did, yeah. but he didn't mess anything up. So he can start campaigning after this election season and basically do what Ron DeSantis messed up. Ron DeSantis was perfectly set up to endorse Trump, not get into the race, and then have two solid years after his governor term ended to be the next president. Uh, Governor Cooper is going to do that for the next four years. That's why he went up for his reelection bids on this term that he's serving now and did his launch in New York at a fundraiser because he gets national money. And I think that he's going to be their choice candidate, um, you know, come, come 20, hmm. what, 2028. Yeah. Mm. So, so be. A hundred. It yeah. You know, it was awesome. Hell, we were already thirty three minutes in, man. We we we, we, we keep getting going. It. Uh, I don't mind to keep going. You mind to keep going? No, we can. All right, we'll, we'll yeah. go for a little bit more. Um, so, Hunter, what do you? Um, to me, a big a big thing to me is because I concern to me is I'm a hunter, and Chad likes to fish. We we're both a hunter and fisherman. All right, so I spent a lot of time. Out on the water. So the last, kind uh, of, I ran for uh, water conservation um, years ago. It's hard to run against a guy whose last name is tied to water. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, but I did pretty good for not for not hardly doing like any. I went and spoke at a few places and and got my name out. I, I came in like third and only lost by like fifty votes. Yep. Which was which was awesome, you know. That was just kind of. A, I said, you know, if I didn't win, it'd be it's just a learning experience, and it was pretty. It was pretty fun. But my concern is is um is keeping our waters clean. Um, I, I hate that the governor, whoever the governor appointed for like fish and wildlife. Yeah, can we get an, uh, an answer on why there's no flounder season? Yeah. I think that's pretty they, big. They gave us a couple, but you get one a year. But no, Jen, there's none this year, zero. There's no, like they, a couple get, surprise weekends yeah. or like days. There's like you some, can go there's hunt some flounder in today. inland, not in the ocean. In yeah. You could get them in the Cape Fear River. So you can go to Virginia or South Carolina and catch a buttload. And, but North Carolina, we got plenty of flounder. You can walk and see them everywhere. Yep. And I love going out this past weekend. Yeah, I love going out and catching fish and bringing it home and, and feeding it's, my family. It's because we have a liberal, far left liberal governor and far left liberal attorney general, and flounder's delicious. 
Grouper is delicious. So if conservatives like it and they like to, to hunt and fish, they're like, got to get rid of it. Mm. I'm, convinced, I'm convinced that they only got rid of flounder season because people enjoy flounder. Yeah, and then, you know, I want to keep the waters clean. You know, keep, keep people, you know, from messing up the islands pretty much and our waterways. And, and I think that's a huge misconception with Republicans and Democrats is that Republicans don't care about the air quality and the water. Uh, we want less regulation because it's over-regulated and is not doing a job that helps anything with the environment. Um, I'm not a climate denier, but I don't believe in climate change. I don't believe that humans in the last 150 years mm, bro, since the climate. Industrial Revolution, we did not cause the damage that's done. And the climate has been changing since it's the been changing since day the dawn one. Of time. Well, the climate radicals do not look at how much sulfur and carbon is put in the air when there's volcanic activity. I mean, you look at, at Iceland right now as active. Just a little over a year ago, there was that huge eruption off of Africa that, that put an a ungodly amount of carbon in the air. And I just don't believe that humans are the cause. Like I said, in the last 150 years, since the Industrial Revolution, we didn't cause all this damage. The earth naturally does this. The earth naturally got too hot and then there was an ice age. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit more and find out about how that happened. I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I love the reels that come up talking about the Anunnaki and the pyramids and well, all I, this advanced actually, civilization. Joe, Joe Rogan had two great climatologists that were on his show that were at both ends. And he, you have to go back and look. It's been a couple of years that he had those guys on. But they were within a short period of time of each other. And they're really interesting to listen to, and you might, you know, get some information from that. But I would, I would check those out. Well, I mean, podcasts are a great source for learning about things that you didn't already know about. I mean, that's why you guys have already had such a huge success in the amount of people that are that are listening to your Off the Hook podcast because they are tired of hearing the regular talking heads that uh that are not even in the business right, up there right. making regulations yeah him, but we're the actual feet on the ground we're the ones who are doing it and yeah. we're the ones who are pushing for you know safety and and and, and everything that comes comes with it yeah yeah it's not just the the glory you know you think of the the bondsman the bounty hunter whatever you want to say you know go and get them we tell those stories they're interesting but there's other sides to this that you know is, is not so fun and it's stressful so you know we let you know both sides i mean getting bail calls at two o'clock in the morning yeah oh. yeah those are hard to take dude yeah, <laughs> yeah i gotta yeah. call i gotta call another night for three o'clock and, and if calls don't go to me they go to chad yeah, they go to me they yeah. go to chad and i gotta call at three o'clock in the morning and i was like what and, and, and and usually the person calling is drunk too. Yeah, and it was, but it was a girlfriend of the guy. And she was like, "Yeah, we're just down here on vacation. He got arrested for no reason." And I was like, uh, "Okay, yeah. what time is it? Is it's three o'clock." I'm no. like, "When did he get arrested?" Uh, not quite an hour ago. I'm like, "He hasn't even been booked in, and you got shift change, so call me back about eight o'clock." Well, you said it's twenty. Everything says it's twenty four hours. And nobody's answered phone except you, and you're telling me you gotta wait till after shift change. I'm like, look, man, this is the way it works. If you don't like it, lump it. And then she kept going, and finally, I just hung up on her. I was like, I ain't doing this. Well, and if you need to get bailed out, it's because you probably don't have much of a connection to the community. Um, you know, there's there's no viable assets to your name that uh, they can't ROR you. So you guys are taking a gamble with almost every single person that you pull out. It's How a do you calculated, filter through it's that? It's a calculated risk is what we do each time. We have to interview a person within a few seconds, determine if we're going to spend a lot of money, write, basically write a big check for that person to get, be released. And sometimes, sometimes it, it they... They get over on the court system, and they get over on us, and that's why we have to go all in places like you see up there, you know, on our dime and not the taxpayer's dime. Right. But they're trying, you know, like Will Cooper and Josh Stein, they want to go more to a taxpayer-funded system through pretrial, so it comes out of your pocket and not the bondsman. 
Yeah. And then they can then the, the person who committed the crime can go to the next state over and they're not going to go after them and they can go there and do the same they can do the same thing, commit the same crime and and hurt another victim and that's another thing I was wanting to get into was when you know we we keep talking about the consequences for these for the criminals, but what about the victim and yeah. how many times do they get screwed <laughs> over? Like so, you're a small business owner, right? We we Hunter and I talked about this last night. We actually, I, I ex- explained. You know, you remember when we went to Little Washington with Michelle, yes, and a bunch of other bondsmen. Um, that was the first um, pretrial program that was being introduced. Yep, I believe that's that was so that that lady from UNC Chapel Hill who teaches bail reform in her class, uh, Mr. Jessica Smith. If you're listening, take notes. We were there in the back. We weren't really invited, but we sat there, and we were behind judges, magistrates that were listening. And the uh, D- Department of Insurance was there, too. Don't well, forget. yeah, Mr. Cable was there in front of us. Um, and this lady was teaching how to implement the new um, bail reform. And the magistrates, you can see you them, can shaking, see them their shaking their heads. They were yeah. like, this ain't going to work. This, this ain't, ain't going to work. work. But they had to do it. you know. So, yeah. so what happens is they couldn't win it on the state level. They had to approach in districts. And so this lady went out. She, she spoke to them on how they were going to start it. And, and it sounds good. We're going to fund you all this money. And, you know, this is all money that's given to these, these areas for these programs. And, you know, like you said, you see the judges shaking their heads. They're like, I see these people over and over. And it doesn't work this way. You know, they know how it works. So it's going to force these magistrates to to retirement, early retirement, or get out because they don't want to deal with it because they well, know. Well, like here in New Hanover County, we lost three really good yeah. magistrates. And then I know that two of them were replaced. I had one of them when I went to go to a bond. It was a, it was a lady who had a $25,000 bond. I just met this magistrate for the first time. I think they moved from Maryland down here. No offense to Maryland, but I'm sure that they treat things differently there. Um, this person, this lady, this is her third DWI within a year. She's obviously not getting the message to not drink and drive. No. And there was a child in the car. Mm. Bond was only 25000 I came up, got the paperwork, you know, slid it through there, and he looked at it. He goes, oh, yeah, I remember this. We, me and the other manager were talking about this. We thought it was set too high. I said, too high? Really? Three well, di- uh, third DWI third, within a year within with, a a child, year. with a child with a child in a car now. Right. And and um, I said, really? I said, this is, you know, explain. You know, he goes, yeah, but this isn't meant for punishment. No, but it's a deterrent. And apparently she's not getting the the what's going on here. Right. So, you know, if you're facing that, if you're facing three D- DWIs, child endangerment, your chances of going to jail for a while are very strong. It starts at two. So, you know, do you really want to? I mean, she's not tied to the area. Right. Because I, I remember we did her bond, you know, but I thought that it was actually kind of low for what she was facing. And so I, I know that she, she wasn't really tied to this area. Um, but again, we take that on. If we can't. You know, but if we, she, have to, we have to deal with it. She misses, messes up. Guess who's going to go get her? We do. You know. Yeah, we do, and it's on the our map. pocket <laughs> up there. All the places we've been on our dime, not the. I'm going to take that map down one day. Maybe we should it. put the map back here. And we can point to each one when we tell a story. Those are a lot of pegs, too. That's, I mean, the entire <laughs> and those are Midwest, not all the pegs. The East Coast, yeah. Texas, California, New Mexico. Yeah, it's a, it's a big list. Well, and you know, y'all small business and other small yeah, businesses. Yeah, we're just one. You know, I with my surf shop, many times I was stolen from, and I had to go to court as a witness, only to find out that the case had been settled, that they had taken some kind of plea. I never got made whole. I never got compensated for my loss. So you just had to suck it up. Basically, I had to take a day off, pay an employee to be there. Um, I'm not crazy about the way the system's run, but right now it's the best system that we have. Um, With bail, I think that's the most appropriate way because you guys get to do things that police officers can't do. You can go in certain situations and recover a fugitive um, where police officers can't do that. Right. Hey, got a question for you. 
Do you have a bottle of his here? No, not here no? anymore. No. Damn. You're talking about the North Carolina bottle? Yeah. Yeah, it's really so, cool. So, Mr. Mr. Ford here has a... A great distillery. I, I'm I'm quite proud of you, Hunter. Thank Smart you, thank you. Did a really good the, job with the, with the bottle. So yeah, if yeah. you go into your local ABC store here in North Carolina, or is it, are, are you outside North Carolina also? Just North Carolina right now. Just North Carolina. So just North Carolina. If you go in and it's a it's a vodka bottle and it's in the shape of North Carolina. It's trademark, so you can't do can't take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's shaped in, uh, as a state of North Carolina. It's actually not bad vodka. I'm not a vodka or tequila guy. But I, I did drink it every now and again. But uh, it's really good, and it's a cool bottle, especially having it on, you know, sitting on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. And I think we did, we did a, a Mark Robinson deal at. We your, had it etched, yeah, yeah. You had it etched with uh, his, his signature, and uh, yeah, that was really cool. Yes, yeah. man. We, um, you guys brought him to Burnt Mill Creek when I owned Burnt Mill Creek. Yep. And uh, long time ago. Yeah, but it's what uh, kicked off his lieutenant governor campaign. And at the time, I was working with the Big Talker, um, conservative talk radio here in Wilmington. And I talked to the guys at the station after he spoke, and I said, you know, this guy, Mark, he's going to be our next lieutenant governor. And they were like, no, 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 it's not him. The field's too crowded. He doesn't stand out. He won handedly in the primary, and then he won well in the general election. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, he's up against a much tougher candidate it's in so, Josh Dine. It's so funny. He stayed at my house that night. Uh, mm -hmm. it, for him, seeing him going from that to being running for governor and having, you know, his – Security detail around him. It's it's bad. He lost a lot of weight too. Yeah, he was a big guy. But yeah. um, the important thing about that is he got out of the business that he was in and ran to make a difference. He wasn't a career politician, right? And that's what I was saying earlier was more people should get involved in their government somehow. You ran for soil, water and soil. I ran for NC House. Chad's up next, so he has to run for something. I don't, let's see. <laughs> I was on the uh, board for the North Carolina Bell Association. I mean, that's a big that's a big deal. Yeah. And um, we see talking and, and listening to this podcast how important Bell is. Um, these radical ideas of letting a, a, a violent offender or letting a career criminal continue to get released to recommit the same crimes. It's not like they get real clever and, and go out and learn how to do something different. A thief is a thief. Uh, an arson is an arson. You know, they're, they're going to recidivate. They're, the recidivism rate for those types of crimes is really high. Um, well, I tell you what. Go ahead, Jed. No, I was going to say I wanted to read real quick. That this was just in uh, our local news um, just last night. I was scrolling, came across it here in Wilmington. Two people have been charged after hitting multiple vehicles downtown Wilmington, according to the Wilmington Police Department. Police observed a vehicle crashed into a, a moped Saturday around 10.45 p.m. in the area of 23 Market Street. That's downtown. By the right, way. right. Between Police attempted the to approach first. the vehicle, but it took off. The car was later seen down South 3rd Street at a fast rate of speed. The driver, Adalia Lopez Navia, 20-year-old, it doesn't say, but I don't know if she's local or not. I uh, would, I would, you know, there's a high probability, 50-50 these days, probably higher, that she's an illegal immigrant. That There's that possibility. And then Mr. Juarez Delgado, that's another name that's not, I haven't heard here locally, um, crashed into two cars before trying to run away. At least two occupants of the vehicle were hit and taken to the hospital by EMS. Uh, Navaya and Delgado were eventually stopped by the police, arrested, transported back to the Wilmington PD. Both are facing several charges, including misdemeanor hit and run, felony hit and run, felony flee to elude arrest, DWI, and driving after consuming under 21. Both received unsecured bonds. Now, now, that's the part that should gripe you. And what, they probably don't have insurance. No, I, no, that's that's probably not. But did, did it say driving without a license? I mean, that usually is one of those. things. Usually, that, that goes along with it. Did not say they they might have willingly uh, omitted that. This is WECT, so there's that. Um, I mean, that's a big deal with our news is they do leave out important details. Um, it is important to us right before an election 
to know if these people that caused this crash and uh, you know ruined a bunch of vehicles not only two could they went possibly, to the hospital also two people went to the hospital they were not over 21 so they were drinking illegally they could possibly be without insurance without a license and they could possibly be illegal immigrants hit and run they had two felonies two cars hit two people went to the hospital but unsecured bond so unsecured now i'm not i'm not saying everybody's got to get a secured bond but when you jump into the the realm of felonies we think maybe these folks aren't local they already showed you that they're not afraid to run. Okay, yep. it's in the charges. So, <laughs> like, you should have something tying them. Well, that's it, all I'm saying. It, it doesn't have to be huge, but something tying them. And to, the only way for us to change this is to elect the right people to get this mess out of our system. Now, I wonder if that went before a magistrate or a district attorney did that. No, 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 that as a magistrate, they, they'll get their first appearance, and that first appearance, the ADA will stand up and say, "Hey, we, they need well, a secured bond." Well, this or, was posted last night. They could have gone to court. A judge could have done that. I don't know. That's well, something. I know. That, That's we why need I said. something. We need to look into. Well, that you know, you don't have to assume that it's a magistrate. We think it might have been, but they had already gone to court. Yeah. Uh, who, who knows? Well, and, and I think another problem with the way that, that our society is running now and the way that politics have overwhelmed absolutely everything, if you even question somebody's legal status now, you're condemned and, and you're, you're called a racist. Uh, and that's not the case. You know, we don't want to see illegal immigrants committing crimes in our backyard, in our neighborhoods. I have children. Um, that kind of reckless behavior in a vehicle can injure or kill my wife and kids yes. while they're out on the road. Right. Um, so these aren't victimless crimes. Uh, right now, we see how many victims there are. Two people in the hospital, yeah. multiple cars. Right, right. This is just our little tiny speck on the map. You know, you turn on the news and you hear about it and all these other places. You just heard about... But how many times is this happening throughout the U.S.? That's my point. It's like, it's we're just a speck and, and all the other stories of yesterday. You just... Okay, yesterday's news. What was it? The Hondurans that are up in Ohio? Yeah. That story? You hear about them? Taking yeah. over apartment complexes? No, no, no. That's, that's, that's in Colorado. That's, a, that's, that's in Colorado. That's, that's I mean. in Colorado and that is Venezuelans. Yep. The Hondurans... See, it's, it's not just people think people come across the border is, is, is all Mexican people. It's not. There are several other countries of people coming through. I can tell you Mexicans don't want to leave Mexico. Mexico is busting right now. Their economy is doing really well. Um, right down deep in the Yucatan, Mexico has realized it's really expensive to get through the Panama Canal. There's a lot of uh, ships that are coming through that... It's too expensive to go on rail from San Diego or uh, L.A. or any of those West Coast ports and train it across the country. They're working on a huge operation to be able to unload cargo ships, train them in that short distance to the Gulf of Mexico, reload them on cargo ships, save the huge expense of going through the Panama Canal, speed up transportation, and uh, you know they're getting it right. They're spending billions upon billions of dollars to put in this airport and these two terminals, and it's a game changer. So Mexicans don't want to leave Mexico. There might be some poor migrant workers that come, but our problems right now are South Americans. They're people that are coming from Sudan. They're people that are coming from Venezuela. Uh, the Philippines, the the China. Yeah. I yeah. mean all over the world are coming. They're they're coming through the border. Oh, it's porous. And the numbers have only slowed down a little bit because now what they're doing is they're giving them an app. So if you register on the app, you come through at the point of entry that you're told to come through. And people that come through the point of entry are not counted as illegal immigrants. They're counted in the regular immigration process. This is things that are set up by the liberals that are running these areas and this part of, of uh, the border security. Uh, our transportation secretary, our president, our vice president, these are people that are they're allowing these policies to happen because... They know that when it comes to election time, like right now, 
with a debate like tonight that um, these are, are questions that they don't want to answer. They don't want that number to be 20 million people or 30 million people. They want to hide that number as much as they can, and that's why they do those apps and give you a time and a date to show up at a port of entry. Bam. Well, look, we're yeah, at we we're at, go on and on. We go we on. on. To, we're yeah. at fifty five minutes yeah, already. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, usually we, we try to keep it around thirty minutes. But now, yeah, uh, with Hunter here, we can go on and on all day with Hunter. Uh, Hunter's a, a bright and brilliant young man. Still, young man. Still, <laughs> still. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. So, uh, my daughter asked me the other day what color my hair was, and I said dirty gray. Dirty yeah, gray. yeah, right. Hers right. is dirty blonde. Mine's dirty gray. Man, I tell you what, if I if I don't shave and I let my hair grow out after about four or five days, my son picks on me. He goes, "Dad, I can see your cul de sac." I'm like, "I know, I know." And all the hair around here is solid gray. So I'm like, "Oh God, I got I got to shave." But uh, I appreciate it. Uh, me and Chad both thank you very much for coming on. We look forward to seeing what happens to you in the future. And you at home, if you ever get to Wilmington, North Carolina, stop by the Cotton Exchange uh, at uh, Momentum Distillery. 318 Nut Street on the back of the Cotton Exchange. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you come taste some different spirits. Um, thanks a bunch. I, I've been listening to the podcast. I'm a fan. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity to be on it. I look always look forward to, uh, to the upcoming guests. But it's really important. Watch the debate tonight. Yes. Make sure you get out to vote. If you're Republican, don't wait until election day. And you don't have to And if you're early. Democrat, wait till the next day after. <laughs> Got it? And you don't have to tell nobody who you voted for. If you're scared or worried about somebody not liking you, look, I, look, I, I don't give a damn. I would love for you to vote for Trump. Okay? And I'd love for you to vote, you know, just policies, not think just about because it. you hate think somebody. about it. Really, think about it. Don't don't think about who you thinks a better or you don't like them based on their personality. That's not going to do anything for your refrigerator, your gas tank, your bank account, your safety. Think about it. That's all so, we're saying. Thank you, Hunter. It go, was, go to the grocery store and go shopping before you go vote. Eggs are back up. Eggs go to the grocery store. Go buy your groceries. Go spend a thousand dollars at the grocery store and then go vote. Yeah, exactly. And then after the vote, if you know if it goes off like the way we want it, then go back to the grocery store and go. Oh, thank God. Give it about six months. Um, Hunter, appreciate you coming, buddy. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. Until then, uh, you can reach us. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all streaming platforms. You can even see us on YouTube at Off the Hook Podcast. Look us up, like, comment. If you want, uh, if you if you got any ideas for us to talk to anybody, send them our way. If you want to talk, send them our way. Give us a holler. Give us a ring. Uh, until then, we love you, mean it. I'm Rob. I'm Chad. And we'll see you next time. You've been listening to Off the Hook with Chad and Rob. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And be sure to follow us for notifications for another exciting episode. But in the meantime, you can go to our website at www.offthehookbill.com to see more. So until next time, stay out of trouble, or it'll be you that needs to get off the hook. See you soon.